Hello, everybody. Welcome into the Fantasy Pros Football Podcast. I'm Ryan Warmly, joined on this Tuesday by Andrew Erickson and by Chris Welsh. Fellas, we're talking wide receivers now. Buy low, sell high, or buy high, sell low. Could be whatever you uh, determine, but the buys and sells at the receiver position. Welsh, we'll kick things off with the wide receivers to buy, and we'll kick things off with your guy. Who you got? We are going back to Brian Thomas. I said buy Brian Thomas a couple weeks ago on the show, and then we, the whole industry kind of agreed we're buying on Brian Thomas. Well, things got a little squirrely this week. Evan Ingram came back and dominated targets. I believe he was 10 targets and caught all 10 of those. This equated to Thomas having his worst game yet. He caught only three. I believe he was targeted six times, caught three for 27 yards. So I think that with this big uptick in we got to buy Brian Thomas, Brian, buy Brian Thomas, and then Ingram comes in, is going to create a lot of fear. But despite the target uh, share change, Thomas still had three times as many air yards produced in week six than what was actually out there. And I think what's important about that is, you know, you know, we can sometimes harp too much, I, I think, on air yards. But like when you see more than a double to actual air yards to what is available out there, you're seeing that, you know, the potential production, it's almost it's kind of a, it's not an expected stat at all or anything like that. But you can almost see the expected potential production. And he had three times as many air yards produced in that week. He also this past week still had an over 12 a dot. So that you know, average depth of target was still there. And he was still around 20% first read look, where on the year, he's around 25% first read. And his ADOT is sixth among starting wide receivers in yards per reception, or he is sixth among wide receivers in uh, yards per uh, reception. So my point to this would be that nothing has really changed with me. That's great that Ingram is back. I believe Ingram will long-term affect Christian Kirk. So Christian Kirk is a pseudo sell into this. I do, do not believe that Brian Thomas is going to take a big down tick. And like I said, what makes this a unique situation, we talked about it two weeks ago. This past week, oh my Lord, every other tweet was about by Brian Thomas. He's going to be elite, elite. And then he failed. And that creates chaos with fantasy owners. All the hype, everyone's got to have the guy and then failure. And everyone goes, oh my gosh, what's happening? I got to get out. I think this is a great time to buy on Brian Thomas. Still like Brian Thomas kind of more than Brandon Ayuk rest of season. And I'm not worried about Evan Ingram taking completely away from his share. And this team is going to be bad. They're going to be passing all the time. They're going to have to play catch up and their big depth play is Brian Thomas. So great time to buy off of his work, worst game, get a top 24 wide receiver, hopefully at the cost of a three and people panicking. So I just wanted to reiterate of all the wide receivers I was looking at, this is the one that just jumped out to me to go and take your opportunity to buy back into Brian Thomas. Maybe you missed it a couple weeks ago as well. You don't this week. Erickson, I, I know we don't even need to ask you what you think about Brian Thomas Jr. Oh, let's hear it. Oh, you got to buy Brian Thomas. And, and the one thing that I will point out too in regards to buying Brian Thomas, again, you just want to buy these talented rookie receivers when they have bad games, they're receivers. It happens at time to time. I'm actually not as concerned about the Ingram usage, Gabe Davis had a big game, right? How many big games did we get from Gabe Davis? He's the one that caught two touchdowns. He's the one that got eight targets and caught five of them. So I, I realized that the, oh no, Evan Ingram's back. Brian Thomas is going back to a pumpkin. It is it is fall season after all. What's going on? But I just found it as simple wide receiver variants where, oh, Gabe Davis just got the better looks as the perimeter receiver on the opposite side of Brian Thomas. And Gabe Davis had a big game. How many times do we need to see Gabe Davis have big games to know that this is not sustainable ever? So I think that things are going to revert back to how they've been the first five weeks of the season, whether Ingram is there or not, where Brian Thomas was still the focal point, the big play specialist, the touchdown guy in this offense. So yes, I co-sign on buying Brian Thomas. We all agree, Brian Thomas Jr., a very strong buy. You can use the trade analyzer at fantasypros.com slash myplaybook or on the My Playbook app to instantly evaluate how any trade will affect your team for this week, the rest of the season, or even in Dynasty. Erickson, who's your wide receiver to buy? Lad McConkey. And I think this was one of Welsh's buys a couple weeks ago. And we're just we're just doubling down, man. We're just going, we're just going. We're just playing the hits, man. That's all we're doing. We're, we're playing the hits. We're playing the classics. Going to these players to buy receivers, rookie receivers. We we love them. So McConkey last week off the bye week, eight targets. He only caught four passes for 43 yards, but still a 26% target share. 
at almost 100 air yards. He fell just short of a touchdown with two targets inside the 10-yard line. McConkie's doing exactly what I thought he was going to do in this offense. Not put up massive raw counting stats because the Chargers just don't throw the ball a ton, but his efficiency numbers on a per route, per run basis, it's great. He's inside the top 12 in terms of target share this season at 27%. So you're looking at this matchup against the Arizona Cardinals. Again, an offense that gave up a lot of points specifically to the Green Bay Packers receivers last week when they lined up in the slot. McConkie ran the most routes among Chargers wide receivers last week, and that was despite him suffering a head injury that had to get checked during the game. So I love McConkie. Again, because he hasn't put up the massive counting stats, that's what makes him attainable. But when you look at it from a market share, from a team percentage, it's up there with some of the best wide receivers in the NFL, what his role in this offense is. So I don't know if we're ever going to see him really crack those massive games unless we see game script really get out of hand. I mean, if we ever get the Chargers in a game where they have to kind of play in a shootout, where they're forced to have Justin Herbert drop back to throw 40 times, then you're going to see McConkie have monster games. But up until that point, he at least provides a solid floor, and that's what makes him a great trade target. One of my favorite profiles to buy in trades every year is talented rookie running, or excuse me, rookie wide receivers that I like and, and liked in the draft and like to fit and everything coming off their bye week when they haven't done it yet. And we, they've already had their bye. You often see a change there. So I was all over Lad this week. You're right. For, for various reasons, the counting stats weren't there in this first week coming off the bye. I, I have a lot of faith that they will be there, at least to the degree that he's a value moving forward the rest of the season. I, I really like this call. And I know it's one that we've brought up before, but I couldn't agree more. Um, he just really fits the description of the types of guys that I like to to try and acquire in trades because you don't have to spend up to get them too. Like it, again, this isn't like a huge name where you have to trade a big name running back to get a big name receiver. You can probably throw McConkey in as a part of a larger deal, or you can throw in you know a bench guy for him if it's somebody who has high upside or somebody else in your league really believes in them, something like that. There are there are iterations of making a trade for Lad McConkey that really don't hurt you all that much and you get a lot of upside with it. So I really like this pick. Welsh, what do you make of Lad? Yeah, I mean, this was my pick a couple weeks ago going into the buy. I think this, so Brian Thomas must have been like three weeks ago. And then uh, Lad was going into the buy because of everything that Erickson just said. You know, I mean, he's like a 30% first read guy. I mean, he's a primary first read guy. You know, interesting thing, he's got these feels a little bit right now of like Wandale Robinson, where Wandale, you know, gets. 10 targets, six catches for 40 something yards. Lad kind of has that, but where you can like dream on the upside, Wandale's got an average depth of target of around four. Lad is at 10. So he's still got an A dot that's like getting the ball further downfield. So I think there's a lot of upside potential can break tackles. He's finding really good separation. He is the first read on this offense. They're also establishing the run more and more. I mean, J.K. Dobbins I think, was like 25 carries. You know, you establish that run. You bring defenses up a little bit. That's going to allow Ladd to not just be able to get the ball down the middle, but he's going to be able to do some stuff with the ball outside once he catches it, you know, after the catch, some yak. So, this is my guy. I loved Lad. I don't think he had big and like I w- unfortunately I was saying to buy him going into a bye week, which is really tough for a lot of people. The cool thing is, is I don't think he did enough this week to be like, well, that's gone. No, I don't think so at all. I think there's a lot of like sneaky underlying things that are showing this is a guy that's going to have a big week coming up here soon, even though this offense doesn't necessarily feed into that. So still completely cosign. And you know what? I kind of like that we kind of played the hits again. I think we should do that from time to time. As content creators, like we got to go in week in and week out and do this. Sometimes it's hard to really identify a different player every single week and you don't want to force it. And I think I'm I'm happy that you did the same thing and uh, Erickson, that you and I both kind of picked players to say, we're going to come back to this and kind of reiterate because there are only so many players you really should be buying at a certain time or or make sense to buy or you can make big cases for. I mean, we could just like throw out random names to buy and sell and stuff like that, but like give really good cases for it. So I'm glad that we both kind of did this to reiterate. These are some big upside plays, one underperformed and one just hasn't broken out yet. So both Ladd and Brian Thomas, go make those moves. Want to let everybody know we have a special offer for you. Unlock a month of Betting Pros Premium for free. Download the Betting Pros app today. Use promo code FPFREE. That's F. 
P free. Get access to tools like the same game parlay tool, the prop bet analyzer, and the prize picks prop bet cheat sheet. Don't miss out. Try it for free for one month now. Only available on iOS. Again, the promo code is FP free. All right, let's get into our wide receivers to sell. And well, uh, I will just say your receiver was George Pickens of the Pittsburgh Steelers. While we were recording this show, we got breaking news from Tom Pelissero that the Steelers are considering making a switch at quarterback. Uh, it appears that Russell Wilson will be getting first team reps at practice this week in anticipation of potentially having him be the starting quarterback on Sunday night football against the Jets in week seven. So Kind of a surprise. I mean, from the fantasy perspective, obviously, Justin Fields runs a lot, you know, provides a lot of value there. Also, the Steelers are four and two. They've been winning games are coming off a blowout win over the Raiders. It wasn't Fields' best game of the season, but I don't think he's done anything to be supplanted as the starter here. We know what Russell Wilson is at this stage in his career. I'm shocked by this. I think the the most common reaction I saw on Twitter as this news broke a few minutes ago was, Why? Just a lot of confusion. Like, I don't understand what the Steelers are thinking. Uh, I'm thrilled, by the way, as a fan of a team in the AFC North. I love seeing the Steelers make this move because I think Justin Fields is just a better quarterback than Russell Wilson at this stage in their careers. So like I say, George Pickens was your pick here, Welsh, as a wide receiver to sell. Is that still the case now that we have this new bit of information? We are selling the thought of selling George Pickens is how I'm selling this. By the way, the Pisa Pia household is devastated because did a show with Joe yesterday on the podcast feed, which everyone should check out, the Fantasy Pros Football podcast feed, where Joe lamented for an, for an hour, it felt like, about, oh, I was so right about Justin Fields. No one was more right than me. And then they do this. It's devastation. <laughs> so, yeah, like my pick was Pickens. And th- there's still like a little bit about it. My biggest annoyance with George Pickens is – Also, his inconsistency, you know, like Pickens is clearly the main target, except, you know, for this one week where he mysteriously got in trouble and his snaps weren't out there and those type of things kind of float out there. But also the main reason that I was taking this take and this doesn't go away is is like still an Arthur Smith offense and like that doesn't breed well to like big offensive pieces. But this was also about Justin Fields. You know, Justin Fields in this offense, he built this even more about running. It wasn't about the passing game. Uh, they rank ninth currently in rushing yards per game, and he is a big piece of that. He is 20th in the NFL in passing yards. He is in Justin Fields. By the way, of quarterbacks with 100 completions, there are only two quarterbacks with less passing yards than him. Those names, Bo Nix and Deshaun Watson. Not a great group. But... If you put Russell Wilson in this offense, Russ isn't great, but Russ slings the ball. And part of the problem why, uh, you know, Erickson, we were talking off air, doesn't didn't really like this pick, is like George Pickens is the unrealized master. It's Cortland Sutton and then George Pickens. George Pickens is top 10 in the NFL in air yards, five over 550 air yards, but he only has around 350 receiving yards. So there's all this unrealized potential. They're throwing the ball deep. It's just not working out. That's not Fields' game. That is Russ's game a bit more. And I think this breeds to them wanting to maybe establish a little bit more of a passing game if this does take place. Not to say that Fields is bad. Fields is great. He's a good fantasy quarterback, but it is relied so much on the ground. It feels like this offense is going to change a little bit if Russ is in there. And I got to say, I got to take Pickens off of like a hard sell if Russ is going to be the quarterback because I do think he he gets hyper focused on number one wide receivers, and I think he's going to get hyper focused on Pickens. I think the target shares now potentially go up. So I turned a sell into a buy, but like I said, I'm now selling the thought of selling George Pickens, and this might be a pretty massive buy. And I know this is weird because Russ is not that great. You know, you're as a Ravens fan sitting here like, oh, this is amazing. Get Fields <laughs> off. You know, he Fields does look like a better overall piece. But he's just as a physical quarterback, not just with the running side. Russ probably does have a little bit of that. But also, you know what? This might just be a rotation. They might cover themselves and be like, oh, don't worry about it. It is Fields this week. And then if Fields loses, they put Russ in. The carousel is going to cause chaos into this. So, you know, I might slowly be planting a little thing about if this is a back and forth. Pickens might even be, this might even be a worse situation for Pickens. But under Russ, I like Pickens more. Under Fields, all of that unrealized potential, I kind of want to sell on Pickens. Man, I, I live in Denver. I saw a lot of Russell Wilson <laughs> uh, during his Broncos tenure. He is just was 
bad, man. He's just not a good quarterback anymore, in my opinion. Maybe it was, uh, you know, the the fighting with Sean Payton and the fact that he was hamstrung by, you know, Nathaniel Hackett. And it's not a good situation in Denver. Maybe there's a possibility he's better in Pittsburgh, but I'm I'm pretty out on the idea of Russell Wilson adding value to anyone, um, given what we saw at the end of his career in Denver. Uh, Erickson, what was your reaction to this quarterback change and then also the George Pickens side of it specifically? Well, I think it's really interesting that they picked now to put Russell into the starting quarterback role when they're playing the New York Jets in Week 7, who we just saw get absolutely truck-sticked by Bills running backs on Monday Night Football. So why are you then throwing in the quarterback to then throw the ball more, which plays into the strengths of the Jets' defense versus... We just saw them play a mobile quarterback in a run game that destroyed them. That's how you beat the Jets defense is you run the football. So I think it's kind of weird that they decided, okay, this is the week that we're going to use Russ and run the ball less. I agree with Welsh in the aggregate, the long term. Yes, Russ means more pass attempts, means more passing volume. But just looking at the week seven matchup, that seems really weird to me that this would be the week to to start him. So I don't know. Well, it's not a, we do want to point out like, this is all like, this came out like, 20 minutes ago as we're talking about this, it's not 100% confirmed. It looked like that Russ is the starter. He's getting first team reps and the talk from a lot of the reporters is like Ian Rappaport and stuff that the quarterback change is is afoot, if you will. So I just want to be careful about the conversation. We're talking in affirmatives. I don't think it's quite affirmed that Russell Wilson is the starter this week, but all your points still hold. It is like the timing is very weird. The, the matchup is also very weird, but maybe they feel, you know, that the the passing game has been so taken away from them that they need to reestablish that, and Russ maybe fixes that because they're already a run heavy system with their three backs with Arthur Smith. That the quarterback side maybe was le- less important. I don't know. We could probably speculate through the moon. It's a very weird situation. Yeah, I get why they want to see Russell Wilson just to kind of get an idea because they can always just go back to fields, right? If they play Russell Wilson for three games and he's horrible and they're like, all right, well, let's go back to fields and we'll ride it out. And then maybe fields will be our quarterback in 2025 and beyond. Whereas Russ will just be, here's the door bye, or else Russell Wilson. I mean, Russell Wilson signed there because he wanted to play, right? So they can't just keep him around if he's healthy. Um, so I get why they want to play him, but I think this week is kind of, it's kind of weird just based on the, the matchup. But again, going back to just George Pickett, specifically the talent, I think he's a really talented guy. And even at the end of the Raiders game, they were force feeding him targets. They tried to get him a touchdown at the end of the game. They had a play action shot to him downfield when they were up by more than two touchdowns in a game that they had definitely already won at that point. I mean, they're trying to get this guy going. So maybe this is a move to really appease George Pickens in a way. Let's get Russ. Let's get him some downfield shots. Let's get him going because he is clearly their best receiver and he has all the unrealized usage you could want. So I agree in the long term. Yes, you do want to be buying. George Pickens, even if week seven is a little bit up and down just based on the matchup against the Jets and and Russ maybe uh, uh, knocking off the rust, uh, to, say, uh, to say it one way. Knocking off the rust. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Erickson, who's your wide receiver to sell? Oh, man. So going back to the hits, guys, because this is what I'm doing here. Michael Pittman Jr. Because last week, I don't think you could have probably sold him because it looked like he was going to be on injured reserve for multiple weeks, and it's hard to sell players that are going to be hurt for multiple weeks. But what do you know? Miracles do happen. Michael Pittman is fine. He's in the end zone catching jump balls for touchdowns. But I am still concerned about what this offense looks like when Anthony Richardson becomes the quarterback again. We saw it was very bumpy in the beginning of the year. Really, no Colts receivers except for Alec Pierce was really reliable. And the other thing is, I'm not sure he's even the alpha target leader in this offense anymore. The last two weeks with Joe Flacco in her center, it's been Josh Downs. He has been out targeting. He has been out producing Michael Pittman. Josh Downs has been a target machine. 35% target rate per outrun. That ranks fourth highest in the NFL. And the guys that are ahead of him are a bunch of players that haven't played full games, like a Cooper Cup, like a Rashi Rice, guys that have missed time. So Josh Downs, to me, he projects like the number one wide receiver on the Colts rest of season, regardless of whoever the quarterback is. And when Richardson takes back the starting role, I'm concerned that we're only going to see one Colts receiver be productive aside from the occasional Alec Pierce 80 yard touchdown pass. And if I had to put my chips in on one of these Colts receivers, it would be on Josh Downs based on what I've seen the last couple of weeks. So for me, Pittman scored touchdowns in back-to-back weeks, something that he has never really done. He's never been a touchdown guy. So I would try to sell off Michael Pittman. He's healthy. He's coming off again. And then the game where he scored a touchdown, just too many factors at play where I could see this kind of heading south very quickly. 
So that's why Michael Pittman's back on the sell high list. Welsh? 100% big brain agree. That's the big brain Erickson right there. Uh, full disclosure, A, I had thought about putting Pittman on there, but I didn't because we'd used him before. B, I, I had Josh Downs as my wide receiver buy. I changed it because I didn't want to cause chaos to our show sheet because we're going to talk about him here in a little bit. So I'd actually written up my Josh Downs stuff as the buy, but you know, I just picked a different name because I know we're going to talk about it. I didn't think we were talking about him here. I knew we are going to talk about him in the next section. I completely agree. Josh Downs' first read percentage is like 34, some absurd percent. He's one of the highest in the NFL. He is the safety net of safety net wide receivers. And we know there's a big worrying concern with Anthony Richardson as far as what he is as a passer. Um, I've had disagreements with like listeners and stuff because the one thing I do know is whatever the concerns are going to be, it's going to go to Josh Downs. Like Josh Downs is going to be their safety net. If Richardson is, I mean, the big play, we know Richardson that week one showed us, you know, throw from your knee 60 yards, bullet right into Pierce. Boom. We know that that's in play. But, you know, if he is not and he has not shown a really great ability for big checkdowns, his adjusted completion percentage is really bad. I think in this time, a good coaching staff is going to work through this player and simplify some things. And the easiest way to simplify is let them get to first read and throw. And that player is Josh Downs through the first. He is literally the first read. He is going to, you know, run through the middle. It's not going to be big wide out type of throws. Michael Pittman's already hurt right now. And there hasn't been a great connection with him and Richardson. Yeah, I think Josh Downs is a fantastic buy right now, and I would want to get off of Pittman if I have him. And unfortunately, I do have him in a couple spots. And you got to pick and choose. And really, the only thing probably holding you back is what anyone is willing to um, trade for Pittman. I mean, I would trade Pittman straight up for Josh Downs in a league for the rest of this year, but I'm really not sure what else you could do with it. So complete co-sign with Erickson. Let's get to the Josh Downs conversation because I have him included in our buy, sell, or hold segment uh, for the wide receivers. So the first trio I have here... Uh, Josh Downs, Calvin Ridley, Christian Watson. Who are you buying? Who are you selling? Who are you holding? Well, I'll start with you this time. Uh, Josh Downs is my buy. is my 100% buy. Like I said, I was going through like, again, you do your research like for these shows and you go through and you're like, all right, who are the potentials? And it was like everything I looked, it was like Josh Downs. Josh Downs was just like screaming at me. So Josh Downs is a full co-sign buy for sure. The other two names really make this tough. Calvin Ridley is embarrassing right now. They're openly talking about like eight targets and no catches. That's that's like that uh, Ron Burgundy. I'm not even mad. I'm just impressed. Like, I don't even know how you do that at this point. But like, how do you move off of him? I guess I would have to hold Ridley and I would sell Watson because Watson, I don't know, Watson's kind of like Michael Pittman to me. It's like, oh, we got a touchdown, sell, get him out of here. There's four wide receivers that are going to eat. Everyone's all crying and hugging Romeo Dobbs like, oh, you didn't show up for work and now you're doing stuff. We're so happy for you. Like, I'm, I, I'm just like, there's too many wide receivers, too many guys to feed. So sell Watson, hold Ridley, I guess, massive buy on Josh Downs. Uh, Erickson, what do you think? And and to be clear, the main reason I included Josh Downs, I, I think the way we've seen him play and be targeted with Joe Flacco, like is a no brainer by the thought here was, you know, with the, ult- you know, eventual quarterback switch going back to Anthony Richardson, how much does that change things? Um, it sounds like so far for you guys, like that's not an issue, but, but I just wanted to explain that like, that's why I included him because otherwise I agree. Like, I think he's the most no doubt buy here. No, but I want, I'm, I'm, I mean, maybe you're taking this the wrong way. You were smart to do that. This was a, to- this is a great group that you picked. All I was saying was, I want to be a nice guy and not make you do more work. Uh, <laughs> uh, Worm got to the show sheet before us, put him down, and I was like, oh crap, I'm going to take him off. This is, this is a great list. This is a no, yeah. the conversation makes it sound like this is like ridiculous or anything like that. Cause we love Josh Downs, but no, you were, you were astute you, in the names that you picked. You know, sometimes the audience, the listeners do appreciate when there's an easy answer. Cause when we disagree and it's like, Oh, it's kind of a gray area then yeah. you're like, well, th- well, okay. I'm still just as confused as ever, which, you know, I know we like the, the, uh, the debate and the disagreement, but sometimes when there is like an answer that we all agree on. It's like, okay, cool. I can now agree with that too. Exactly. Kind of take that consensus. Uh, Erickson, you haven't actually answered yet. Do you have downs as your buy in this group? I don't know. I'm going to follow up that great segment from Welsh. That was probably the best buy, sell, hold segment I've heard so far (laughs) this season. So bravo to you. I will do my best to follow it up. For me, look, Calvin Ridley is, I mean, he's probably going to be on the waiver wire, right? (laughs) At this point, he's free. And look, as someone that bet is over on receptions, I wasn't even mad, right? Because he had eight targets. <laughs> the process was there, right? He had the opportunity. But when you go back and watch those targets, they're not even the same stratosphere as Calvin Ridley. So 
I think that this is actually kind of a play on, remember Deontay Johnson at the beginning of the year? Oh my God, this guy is useless. This guy is nothing. And what do they do to change quarterbacks? Mason Rudolph, please step in at QB1, right? If he steps in, we saw him last year with George Pickens, right? George Pickens was productive with Mason Rudolph. So I wouldn't be surprised. Will Levis has shown enough this year that I think they're going to go to a quarterback change and then draft a quarterback in 2025. So I think Kelvin Ridley can bounce back. Again, he had eight targets. They can constantly, last week was the squeaky wheel. Now it's like the squawky wheel this week in week seven. So I like Calvin Ridley as a buy because he's essentially free. Josh Downs is a hole for me. And then Christian Watson, like Welsh said, yeah, he got, it was basically the same thing he always does, right? There was nothing that changed about the way they use Watson that suggests, oh, now he's going to take over as a wide receiver one in this offense. Dobbs had two touchdowns. Dobbs ran the most routes. And Jaden Reed remains the guy you want in this Packers receiver room. Taking down Tavian Wicks didn't really establish, oh, well, now Watson is going to now see a massive target share in this offense. Jordan Love still spreads the ball out to all of his different guys. So I think it's going to be more of the same with Watson. I'm not sure that's the perception. So I agree with you that he's the guy that I would sell. The other trio I have here for buy, sell, or hold, Keenan Allen, Demario Douglas, and Lad McConkey. Lad, of course, somebody we talked about a little bit earlier in this segment. So Erickson, I'll start with you this time. Keenan Allen, Demario Douglas, Lad McConkey. Lad McConkey, going to buy him. I'm going to sell Keenan Allen because he caught two touchdowns, which I did project on the betting pro show. He hit the anytime touchdown. We were happy. We were pumped about that. And Demario Douglas, I, I don't think you're going to get any. I don't think anyone's going over the moon to trade for Demario Douglas. So I think you just kind of have to hold him in. Hey, great matchup this week against the Jags. Drake May, balling out. Yeah, let's go. Welsh, Keenan Allen, Pop Douglas, Lad McConkey. By the way, on that betting pro show, just want to point out two straight weeks of Erickson four and one, two straight weeks of me and three and two. Not as impressive, but both over 500 <laughs> two straight weeks. So come and hang out and touchdown call for you. Uh, betting pros, check it out. The prop show. All right. I am on un- maybe unfortunately or fortunately, I'm co-signing the exact same thing. Buying McConkey. I'm selling Keenan Allen off of the touchdowns and Mario Douglas. I'm holding, but I don't know. He kind of like he has a little bit of a buy feel as well. Drake May, huh? Drake May season. Got Pop more involved. Pop has been getting involved. Whatever bad quarterback they put out there, May looks a little bit better. He's going to open up that uh, open up defenses a little bit because of his running side. But it was really, well, I think the be- best positive sign was that he kept going to Pop Douglas. It didn't change. It wasn't like Brissett's out and all of a sudden Douglas gets three targets. I believe it was nine targets in this one. So he is the focal point of the receiving side. Maybe they will be throwing a little bit more. They're going to consistently be from behind. So that's probably going to keep happening. So Pop is somewhere between a hold and a buy. Um, you know, and, and maybe even, you know, for ar- argument's sake, if it were a little bit of a better team, I probably would have put him as a buy, but it's a Patriot. So hold him, buy McConkey. And sell the other guy who, oh, Keenan Allen. See, sell Keenan Allen. <laughs> I, I, that guy. Guy. <laughs> I, I really it. like Douglas as a buy a lot, actually. Like, I, I was really right. intrigued to see, I, I, I was really curious which receiver it was going to be that Drake may elevated because I thought it was going to be someone. Uh, maybe it'll be Jalen Polk. Maybe it'll be Hunter Henry at tight end. And it really looked like Douglas. It's only one week. So th- it might just be a matchup thing. We'll have to see how it plays out, you know, moving forward. Um, but I, I was really encouraged by the usage. I think Drake May is maybe, you know, he, not maybe. He's going to be up and down as a rookie, obviously. But I think he will be good enough to at least have one receiver be fantasy viable. Douglas isn't going to be a top 20 receiver, but I think he's going to be a value where he is right now. Uh, as we sit here, he is inside the top 60, just barely. He's wide receiver 57 in our rest mm. of season rankings. Like, I, I do think that's too low, honestly. I do too. Is that um, Doug, Douglas you said? Is yeah. that yeah. It's probably yeah. It's yeah, and, and may prove, by the mm-hmm. way, just want to point out, um, uh, Douglas works out of the slot, 80% slot. So May took, you know, the safety nets, rookie quarterbacks. What do they do? It's safety nets. Those are usually tight ends or running backs, but also slot receivers. And that's a really good sign. And that's probably not going to change either. Like Douglas is probably going to be a five to eight target per game type of guy. It'll just be like, what does this team end up we, doing with it? You guys so. remember uh, who uh, Drake Bay's slot receiver at UNC was, right? Remember? Ooh, bring it back. Yeah, Josh Downs. Josh Downs, baby. With that, that wraps the show. <laughs> uh, don't forget about our weekly trade live stream on our YouTube uh, channel where you can come and ask your specific trade questions. We'll be with you every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern. For those listening on the podcast, just go to youtube.com slash fantasy pros, subscribe and click the bell to be notified of all of our weekly live streams. Um, let's wrap up the show. Do you know who uh, Drake May's slot receiver was at UNC? Could it be Josh Downs? 
Oh yeah, well, what a sign! That's a great way to have the show. All right, we'll get we'll get out of here, guys. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Uh, best of luck here making your trades in week seven for Welsh and Erickson. I'm Ryan Warmly. Uh, we'll see y'all again next time.